2020 was a crap year. And if it didn't tell me anything, I would definitely say that people just aren't prepared for when the crap hits the fan. And as you can see from what happened to stores across the nation, people just wiped out all the shelves. People panicked. People stocked up on crazy things like toilet paper. And it's like people haven't been developing any kind of emergency preparation plans to keep themselves, you know, safe in case things really go wrong. And 2020 was a really, really good example of that. It is March of 2021. And a few weeks ago, we just saw a massive problem in Texas where everything was shut down, got really cold. And same thing happened. Shelves in grocery stores across the state were completely wiped out. Nothing on the shelves. Toilet paper was probably ransacked. I don't know. But I did see the pictures online where there was just nothing on the shelves. So it kind of got me inspired. I've been inspired to make these videos for a little while now. I've uh, seen plenty of YouTube videos where people talk about their everyday carry kits and their Altoid tins like this one right here. And it's uh, it's been something that I've been interested in making myself. So I decided to go ahead and start a channel for it. This is... a. Uh, my very first uh, Altoid tin, I've been carrying it around for a little while. And uh, when I get inside of it and stuff, you'll see kind of like the things that I have put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and tweak it a little bit. I decided to keep um, keep it together for this very first video so I can show you what I've been toting around for probably, I would say, the last five, six months. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. I found a bunch of YouTube videos that uh, showed me how to build them and... I felt like just putting together my own my own version of it. So here we go. So guys, my channel is called Out With Me, and I'm going to be putting together various types of videos. I have a first collection of videos that are going to be along the lines of preparation and survival kits to everyday carry kits. I will be doing product reviews for things that you can put in kits, things that are not expensive, and I want to put... Um, all together a series of videos that will just help people prepare, if anything, uh, by having things on a backpack to an Altoid tin to having a prepared car and even to food storage. I'm going to be showing people how to do basically making um, camp food at home, things that are dried and stored that can last forever that actually taste pretty decent, like your homemade jerkies and such. But yes, my channel is called Out With Me. The survival stuff won't be the only content on my channel. I do wish to branch out to other things because I like various subjects. And it would be really cool if you guys could throw in a subscribe because I will be putting out a lot of new content. My channel is new. A like and a comment really goes a long way to help me out. This is my very first video and I will have better ways of doing the whole give me love without doing the the crazy little sticker things but bear with me guys it's my very first video all right my very first edc kit edc stands for everyday carry and well i mean this this has some stuff in there that like you know, if you got stuck in a forest or something like that like you could kind of help yourself a little bit so i'm going to be tweaking my everyday carry kits to feature things that I'm, I use every single day. Um, that's the most important part. You want to have an efficient kit. I decided to go ahead and make a video of my first one just to kind of show you what I've been carrying along with me for a little while. And all its contents are pretty, they're pretty useful in their own regards. Some things I can do with, some things I can do without. I'm definitely going to be altering this kit in my next video actually i have um, a new design that i want to go ahead and throw together and yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and get started very first thing we have on here of course is duct tape i do not like having things on the outside of the tin for some reason it just bugs me so i do want to try to get to 
a version where I don't have things on the outside of tin. A lot of people do keep their duct tape on the outside. It does keep it closed. It is useful. This is a few feet of duct tape. I believe it's four feet of duct tape, which is pretty good. It's a little layered up. Maybe it's three feet of duct tape. I do have it taped to some wax paper. That way it does not stick to the tin. Um, the wax paper is just enough to go around the Altoids tin, and then I use the strip of duct tape to wrap it. It does keep it nice and snug. It slips right in, slips right off. It doesn't come off in my pocket. It does have some welts and such in it in some little spots, but it doesn't bother me very much at all. Put that right there. You can obviously see kind of like the degradation of the tin itself from sliding up and down in my pocket. You know, it's probably also the wax paper messing with the surface. But I have been carrying this one tin in my pocket for about six months, maybe five months. It was kind of middle of last year when I decided to put this together. I started watching a bunch of videos and I was like, hey, that's cool. I want to make my own. So I decided to do that. On the outside perimeter, we do have electrical tape. It is just one little row that goes all the way around. It's not very much. It can be used for practical um, applications, such as putting around a wire or whatever you want to use electrical tape. Electrical tape kind of sucks for anything, but I just have it on the outside because it's cheap. I did have some laying around, and it keeps the lid sealed much nicer. And um, as you can see, it is it is packed full of stuff. If I give it a shake, you can kind of hear a little rattle, but for the most part, it is very stuffed and it has a lot of things, very little space to add anything else. And yeah, I'm gonna get to that. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. The lid itself is coming off the hinges. It's another reason why I wanna add a new EDC kit. So I'm gonna have a brand new uh, Altoid tin. First thing you're gonna notice is I do have a few sheets of post-it notes. I did cut them to fit them up against the, the top here. I, I have five sheets here. Honestly, I've only used one ever for anything and it was for something really lame, but I don't really use it and I don't really use writing utensils even though I have a pin in here. But yeah, so the first thing you're going to see though is those five sheets of post-it. But um, as you can see though, it is pretty packed in here. I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit so I can start taking some things out. One thing, let's start off with the top here. This is that pin I was just talking about. Ugh. It is inside of a straw, a little straw, and inside the straw here, right there, I do have two toothpicks. Ugh. Two toothpicks. They are cheap, very, very easy. These are the gum sticks, they can go through there. Two of those fit into that little straw with ease. The next thing I have is a refill for a pen tool that I have. It is little, I still have ugh, the wax ball that sits on the top of it. Maybe it's a little bit of plastic ball. So I have not even used this, not a single time. Um, what I used right on there was a pen that I was carrying around in my pocket and this was just an extra and I have yet to use it. So I've been tugging that thing around for about six months, haven't even used it. So I can imagine that it's not going to be very useful for my kit. It is long, slender, and does fit in a nice nook and cranny, especially inside of a little straw. So I may keep it just because, you know, just it doesn't hurt to have it in there. So I might keep it in there. Next thing you're going to see here is, ugh, I don't want to move the stuff around too much, you know, cause, but um, little bitty tweezers. These tweezers I actually got at the dollar store and they are a needle tip. If my video will focus, they are a needle tip. They're pretty cheap, but they work. They pluck nose hairs out pretty good. That's what I use most of them for. I actually use these mostly to take things in and out of this kit. And um, it's really, really good to just kind of pluck in there and grab it like this. Oh, no, bad example. I'm going to set that down here and just move on. <laughs> so right here, this is something I actually use almost every single day are little Q-tips. I have one Q-tip. It's cut. About that much of it is gone. And I'm able to stuff both sides inside of a straw. 
The straw is heat tempered on both sides, so it's sealed. It's it's not watertight because it's there's two straws put together. But um, I actually I clean my ears out almost every single day. My headphones just kind of clog my ears up with wax, and I produce ungodly amounts of earwax for some reason. I guess it's just cursed genetics. So I carry two cotton swabs in my ears or <laughs> in my tin every single day for my ears. And um, I actually change this out quite a bit. I use the same straws and I just change out the, the Q-tips every single day, almost every single day, not every single day. Next thing you're going to see is I have two matches. They're cut down. The reason why they're cut down is because you don't need a long match. Um, you just need enough to get it lit and then a little bit of the, the little wood surface area to catch the fire, I think. But um, I cut them down to size. I put two of them inside there. I've never used it. They're just in case. Um, if you do need to ever open this and strike them, I recommend using the pliers of your multi-tool to hold onto it and then strike. That way you do have the length in case you're worried about your hand, you know, your finger getting burnt or whatever. So I'm going to set that right there. I have a straw filled with petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly has a lot of uses from fire starter to just being able to clean some chap lips. Honestly, it's, it's a really, really good thing to have. I use it not for everything. Um, I try not to put anything on my lips when they're chapped, but when I do, I use petroleum jelly. It is also good for various other applications. It's a really good tool to have, especially if you can stick it inside of a little tiny straw. Uh, these are straw containers that I make myself. I'll have a video of those. You can see other videos on YouTube, but I will have a video of what I put in there because I have a full drawer filled with a whole bunch of things stuffed inside of the straws because I just like that. This right here is gel visine. Um, it's extra strength. It's uh, for dry, irritated eyes. My eyes do get irritated quite often, especially because I live in a, a cold, dry area. And you can see the bubble kind of floats around there. With these, you want to make sure that you put your fluid inside and then cut it here and then kind of get down to it. Um, I Or heat the thing before you cut it. That way it doesn't push anything out. I noticed that when I use my clamps to close it, it pushes liquid out. But um, the bubble is quite large. The bubble is good. The bubble will ensure that it doesn't explode if there's too much pressure, which I have had one of these. It was filled to the brim. I had no air inside of it. It did pop inside the kit and I had to clean it all out. But this is Visine and I'll use a razor blade to just to cut off the little the tip there on one corner. And then it's a... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a single use, but um, I will do about two or three drops per eye, you know, and then within an hour, I'll probably use the rest of it just because I don't like to have it inside my kit. For the most part, they don't leak. Um, if you have just a corner cut off, it doesn't leak very much, um, especially because of the way that I put it in here. Um, of course, I have baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. It is uh, It's really, really good. It's a good soap. And if you work with anything that gets like oil or grime on your hands, this, um, when mixed with water has like a gritty kind of feel and it actually, it's a, it's a pretty good soap. It can be used for other things. You can put it in water to help a little bit of heartburn. I don't have enough for that. Um, but yeah, I usually always carry this around. I have used two of these over the course of the six months. So I will say it does have a practical application. One of those times was just an experiment to see if it does work. And honestly, it did. And then the second time, it was a time I actually needed to use it. So I do recommend carrying a little bit of baking soda in your kit. And uh, you don't need a lot. If you do need a lot, of course, you can use a bigger straw. Um, you can use a longer straw. It doesn't matter. But I find that this little guy right here has actually served its purpose um, one time really well. And so I will keep that in my kits. All right. So next on the list is... A razor blade. This is a used razor blade. I've been um, using this for cutting into um, like the visine, for instance, the petroleum jelly and the uh, the sodium bicarbonates, the, the baking soda. So this one I keep on the top because it's easier to be accessed. 
And um, I use this one to kind of be the cutter that I use for my, my straws. So I do have that one sitting on the top. It is flat. It does sit on there pretty nicely. And um, I kind of, you know, it's the one that's, uh, I don't want to dig through the, the whole kit to get the other one because there's another razor blade in this kit. And I'll show you here in a second where it's at. But for now, I just keep that one on the top. I do use it. I have used it for other things, for cutting open um, boxes to just like even cutting off a hangnail. I had a, a little hangnail that I wanted to make a decision. I do have a flat multi-tool. This was a $4 tool that I got from Walmart. Really simple, really easy to use. It doesn't have very many tools on there, but I find myself not needing to use the tools very much. But yeah, it does have the pliers, which I do like. Um, all the straws that I have filled with containers and lit on the ends to seal the plastic have been used with this. I have used these pliers to make them all, so it is useful in that regard. Of course, it does have your basic tools on here. I'm not going to lie, I've never used one of these tools on anything. Um, I do want to be prepared just in case, though. These tools are very simple, very cheap. They are, you know, I mean, I mean, what are you going to really use these for? Nails and all that kind of stuff. But um, I haven't really ever used the tools, so I'm not going to lie. Nail file, I don't ever use that. I honestly just use the pliers. But um, I do have a better multi-tool that I do use. And uh, I'll have that one in my next kit because I just updated that. And um, I do like the way this looks, though. It sits in there nice and snug. And, I mean, it's cool looking. I think it's kind of alien ship vibe-like. But I do have that one. I'll set that right there. Next thing on the list... Go ahead and pull this guy out right here. This is a micro SD card. Um, it is a USB. You plug it in there. I do have a micro SD. This is a, it is jam tied in there. I did get this off of Wish, I believe. And um, I do have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card already put in there. I don't push it in all the way. It will close nice and snug. But if I ever have to use this, um, I have it ready. My phone has 128 gigabyte um, micro SD in it also. So I typically don't need to use this, but this is that just in case. And um, it is pretty snug and compact enough to fit into this, this case really, really nicely. It's okay to have, you know, in case I, for some reason, have 400 million pictures and videos on my phone and I need to use another one. Here it is. Pretty nice. Fits really nice in there. I left a little key ring on there because it doesn't hurt. Next thing in the list is going to be, let's go ahead and bust out these tweezers. I do have a, this is one cotton ball. This one has Vaseline all over it. This is a good fire starter. It will take a spark really easily. I have used this quite a bit a few times. Um, I have dinked around with the idea of going out into the forest and wilderness and, you know, trying to be a little survivor man before. And I will say that I'm kind of efficient at making fires, little itty bitty ones. I feel myself doing it. I don't feel lame at all because it is a useful trick to know. I've tried with lighters, all the way to little sparkers to flint striking. Um, it is, it is a useful thing to know. I feel that people put so many fire starters into their kits and it kind of defeats the purpose of knowing how to start a fire with just what you have. So I have very minimal fi fire starting items in my kit. I feel if you want to learn how to start fires, if you want to have that in your preparation kits, learn how to start fires, you know, with items that you're realistically going to have the best item you can have for fires is a lighter. And nowadays a lot of people, they still smoke. I don't smoke and stuff. They have lighters on them. Carry a lighter with you. Even if you don't use it, it is a nice item to have. Lighters are probably the best way to start a fire because literally it's snap and you got a fire. Ugh, it is wedged in there pretty nicely. Here it is. This one is just a regular cotton ball. It doesn't have any Vaseline on it. And I can tell because this one looks gooier than the other one. And, um, or this one looks gooier than this one. But, uh, this guy right here is just a regular, regular cotton ball. If I need to mix it with petroleum jelly to start another fire, 
I can. If I can use it to um, do something with it, um, cleaning grime out of my eye or whatever, um, I do have a cotton ball just chilling in there. And um, I actually rather enjoy stuffing things into straws. So I'm not going to lie, having this in here, I probably will never use it. If I do, I have it. But um, I just like stuffing cotton balls into straws. I'm not going to lie, guys. It is fun, and it's also cool to be prepared. You know, this is a, a nice little hobby to have, and it's a hobby that you may never need to use it, but if you ever do, you have it. You know, and it's it's something that people should learn about, I think. This right here is for a super glue container, which I do have inside the kit. It is the, the little nipple that goes on the top, and uh, you'll see it. it's the applicator for the, the, the super glue that's in here. This little guy right here, this is a pretty nice little tool to have. This is a, it is a lighter. It has a little flint striker on it. It was only like $3 on, I actually got this on Wish. Oh wait, no, this, no, never mind. This is Stealth Angel. I do have one from Wish, but this is Stealth Angel. It's pretty nice. But um, this one is really cool because it comes with a cotton inside here. And you can saturate this with fuel. And it catches that light much, much, much easier. Um, it sparks really nice. I don't have any fuel inside of it because, I mean, I can use the sparks just as easily to get to get a flame. So I kind of just keep it clear, you know. And if I do need to start a fire with it, this is that in case of emergency item, you know, I, I I'm versed on how to do that. I've actually practiced quite a few times on starting a fire with just using sparks. And, um, but at the same time though, it is not a bad idea to fill it with fuel. I just don't use it enough to fuel the fuel in it, but it is an item that has lots of uses. It's very easy, very compact. I know some people have smaller flint strikers that they have inside their kits. And I actually want to get one of those. I will add one of those to my kits eventually. But for now, I just have that one and it's a little pill shaped. It's pretty cool. Right here. I do have, you know, a little bit of space for paper. If I can get this sucker out, it's wedged up against the top really nicely. This is just a measurement tape that I got in a dollar store um, sewing kit. And it has, uh, it is 25 inches long. And um, it's, it's really snug. It's just a little, it's a little tape measure just in case you ever need it, you know. Sometimes people can't measure using their hands and such like me. And so this guy is just, uh, it's nice and compact. It's, it's paper. It's thin paper. Um, it's like maybe newspaper. Like it's, it's really, really, really thin paper. And uh, it fits in the kit really nicely. It's not a bad idea to have, you know, something for measurements, a unit of measurements inside of your kit. And um, it doesn't take up almost any space at all. So I have that guy in there. Okay, now we're getting into the depths of the, the the tin. I do have a can opener. Surprisingly enough, I have used this. I've used it a few times. I just got this at an army surplus store. It is just a little can opener. You know, you just all the way around there. Um, I have used this at my work. I am known as the guy who eats canned vegetables a lot. I eat green beans essentially from breakfast and cans of spinach and people get disgusted with me a lot. But this guy is, um, I have used this twice. I've used it actually more than twice. Um, cause I've used it out in the field also, but I'm at work. I have used this twice and I'm very proud to say that because it was because someone stashed the can opener somewhere and I couldn't find it. And so I busted out my kit and I got to show it off. I felt great, but yeah, this is a little army survival, uh, can opener. Um, it's flat. It's really nice. It's easy to use. I have two of these. I have another bigger one that's made for bigger cans. But um, I love that thing. I also have another one stashed away somewhere that my uncle gave me. But sorry, man, I can't find it. It's in there somewhere in the mass of my room. Okay, so the next thing. This is a adapter that I can use for my phone. It has, uh, I think this is USB-C. Um, it's whatever my phone uses to charge. I have just the adapter. I bought that. It's attached to, it has the regular US micro uh the US micro, whatever, you know, um, USB micro, and then it has the C and then it has an Apple, 
um, charger also, but I don't have Apple products. And if I'm ever out in the field and you have an Apple product and you need to charge it, sorry, bro, you're going to have to bring your own because, uh, I have an Android. Okay. So next thing I have down here, this thing is, it's just regular rubber band. It sits in the bottom. It pushes everything forward. It's kind of annoying sometimes, but a rubber band is nice to have. I'll set up right there. Um, of course I do have, oh, I forgot about this one crammed in the side there this is a match tracker it has never been used <laughs> um it's just one of those items just in case i need to use it i have it stashed in the side there it doesn't take up any space it is very thin it comes off one of the boxes that i have for my my matches next thing is the charge cord charge cord this one is a it's like a four inch one i think three or four inches I could use my measuring tape right there to tell me exactly how long it is. <laughs> oh, it's a good, nice thing to have. But um, I just have this wedged in there. I have used this a few times, actually. I mean, there's a USB port at my work where I can just plug this in and I use it with the adapter to charge my phone. I've had to use it a few times. So I just have that tucked in there. It also goes to um, a, a little wallet um charger i have like a little storage battery charger and um, this actually came with it and that's where i got that from so if you're looking for one that's short like that all right the 10 okay i pause the video so that i can uh i don't ram up the time on my video so i can have adamant editing but um this is a 10 i got this at a local store it's a natural grocery store but um these little guys are really awesome you can put three of them in here i only use two I've seen various videos um, from Urban Prepper and such that magnetize these and stick them inside their kits. They have various things inside of them. I really like them. They're really, really cool. They're really compact. But um, this one, for instance, is my little pharmacy. And um, I didn't uh, necessarily steal these ideas from anybody else. I don't think anybody owns the ideas for these, but um, I will have to give credit to Urban Prepper. He has awesome videos. He does put some cool stuff in here. But uh, yep, this is my little, my personal little pharmacy kit. Um, two things I have in here that are pretty important, I think, are your water purifica purification tablets. Um, I do have two tablets in here. They can purify uh, one quart or I believe it says one liter also. You just drop one of these tablets in there, you shake it up, you leave it for 30 minutes, and it's supposed to clean your water. I have used these, and I will not lie, it tastes like crap. <laughs> the water is very iodine-like flavor. And um, you do come, with this kit I bought at Walmart, um, it does come with a, another set of pills that's actually supposed to get rid of that iodine flavor and color from the water that you purify, but it's not toxic if you drink it and i have used these before but um it goes a long way it actually is pretty nice so i have that guy right here yeah. all right so here inside this little foil is a thing of tylenol i have it wrapped into foil and they're little sheets you can break it out if you need to crush your pills up this one right here is an advil extra strength um, i think it's an uh advil pm extra strength I have used those. I very seldomly get headaches, but when I do, usually one of those guys or an Excedrin kind of goes a long way for me. I have something that I use quite a bit. Uh, I get heartburn. So I do have a, I believe this one's a banana and this one is a strawberry. Um, they are Tums. Uh, they're just half pills. Um, half usually goes a long way for me. But I do get a heartburn fairly often. So I do restock this one quite often. Enough to have mixed match flavors. <laughs> so put those over here. Um, of course, the crazy glue. You can see that one. That's probably the first thing you saw when I opened it. Um, this one hasn't been opened yet. I haven't had any need for it. But I have actually used a full tube of this before. Um, it, it works for various things. Uh, mostly usually for, to repair things. Um, small things. But um. I have never put it on a cut or anything like that, but it can be used medically for uh, making little tiny sutures or little tiny uh, cut stoppers if you don't bleed to death, you know, from a paper cut. So I do have that in my kit. Um, it fits really nicely in these little tins too. And uh, it comes in a set of four. I have two left after this guy. And then these last three pills right here are anti-diarrheals. 
Um, I usually don't have problems with this. I do have IBS pretty bad, TMI, but um, I don't use the pills very often, but I have used them before in the past. So it is pretty nice just to have it with you. And in a survival situation, they are very important. You do not want to have diarrhea if you're on a hike or if you're stuck somewhere and you, you're going to go a little while without food or drink or anything that you do not want to be dehydrated from pooping your guts out. So anti-diarrheal is very important for a survival kit. Not gonna lie. So let's set these guys right here. And that is it for this little tin. If you ever need to use it for anything else, there you go. You have a, a tin that you can use. Next one. Set my little. This one right here. This is a mock one. This is one that I've just played with when I first started getting into ECs. I thought it was really cool to have little itty bitty tools like you know your fishing line and such. So that's what this one is. This guy right here, I do have, I'm going to sit this down right here. This is my fishing line. Um, I have modified, before I get to the fishing line, I do have two paper clips. These are little miniature ones. They're actually fairly strong. They're fairly strong for how big they are. And um, I use them. It does keep these nice and snug in there. But um, I have a straw and I have the needle going through the straw. I cut it on two slits. I'm actually going to make a video on how I make these because this is like, it's pretty close to like 16, maybe 20 feet of, if it'll focus on this, it is, um, it is almost 20 feet of a fishing line and it doesn't look like it because of how compact it is, but, um, it is wrapped many times. I wrap it over the top and you can see the slit here. Um, and I wrap it this way and then I wrap it around the other way and it's, a uh, it's quite fat and it's actually pretty, pretty cool. But, um, I have a regular needle in there. I don't have a fishing hook in there. Um, I have watched a friend use fishing, uh, regular needles, regular sewing needles as fishing hooks. And he showed me that they do work. He just bends them into place. He jams it into a piece of wood. He folds it around the wood and he has hooks and I've actually watched him catch a fish doing that. So I'm huge on that. I would like to try to recreate that in the field on tape so I can show you guys. Because if you have one single straw, you can put 50 plus needles inside that straw. Just wedge them inside of there and it's actually really, really good for fishing. I do have also um, fishing hooks. So I will be putting those in the kit too, just, just to have it as easy access. This one right here, this is my little sewing kit. Um, inside of it, it has four um, these little safety pins wedged inside of the straw. They fit pretty nicely. They sit together pretty cool. They are the miniature ones. They're not the large ones. This is also good if you have a piece of plastic. You can fold out the plastic and you can have um, something to collect water on. Um, they can be used for clothing repair, that kind of thing. But um, I also have another little clamp thing right here. It's cool to have two of these. They work just the same as the safety pins if you want to pull something out and kind of clip it on two ends to uh, collect water or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty nice to have those. This right here is another straw. Um, I don't have as much line as I do have for the fishing line, but it is a sewing kit. Um, I think it is about maybe 18 inches worth of, maybe it's a little bit more than that, but um, it is just a sewing kit. Um, I just have a straw with... Um, the needle inside that one's pretty nice um i've never had to use it before but it's one of those things that's in everybody's kit you know just in case you have to sew up some clothes if you get a hole in something my model is just to tough it out and keep going not really i would probably try to sit there and repair i do have two paper clips um, they are just regular paper clips i've never had to use for them but um they're the macgyver special so i'm told and so I'll keep those in my kits. They're also really tiny. You can actually bend them out. And um, actually, I have used safety pin or um, paper clips because I bend them out and I've used them to wrap up things like fishing line and stuff. It makes it a little bit easier to, to bend them if you have two little things. This right here is a needle threader. This thing has saved my life. I'm not even kidding. You get a needle. It doesn't matter how big the eye of the needle is. You jam this through that this little itty bitty wire. You jam it through the needle thread it on the other side and then you pull it through and oh man this thing is so awesome i have horrible horrible shaking in uh, hand uh shakes in my hand and uh using this to thread a needle has 
literally helped me out. I use this even outside my EDC because um, I have sewn before. I've used threading needles application things before. This thing is awesome. This thing is awesome. I cannot recommend it enough. It's flat, takes up zero space, has a lot of uses if you're going to thread needles. <laughs> um, of course, here's my unused razor blade. And uh, that can be used for whatever you need it for, whatever you need a razor blade for. If you're emo, you have to dig through your entire kit to, to get to your your pain, your pain user cut stuff, whatever. But um, but yeah, there's a majority of the kit. Um, it is 50 items, I believe. Alcohol pad, I do have two of those. Um, this is our sterilizing wounds or whatever you have um, need for, you know, alcohol pads i just have them in there i have only used an alcohol pad like once ever in my life and it was because someone forced me to wash my hands when um i didn't need to wash them i washed them with soap and water that was good enough for me but yeah and plus there's hand sanitizers everywhere and i use those i do have two big band-aids i hate band-aids i don't like to wear them but they're good to have in your kits i'm a very um extra person i'll just say that you'll see when i start making my other kits how extra i'm going to be this right here this is just something um i've had for a long time this is dryer tape it is an aluminum base like it um it's really really reflective this is about two feet of it i have it just really really clamped tight it's wedged in there i was thinking about putting maybe some money inside there but um i have no i don't have any uses for this we use it at on my dryer at home actually and um, I don't have any other uses for it other than that, but I decided to put it in here. It is pretty reflective. You know, it is not enough to like see yourself in, but you know, it is some pretty strong tape. Um, it comes in a, a piece of paper, like a little wax paper on the back of it. And um, it is really, really sticky. And um, I do like having it. For some reason, I feel like one day I'm gonna take this out of my kit and the very next day a catastrophe is gonna happen. And be like, whoa, I could really use that aluminum tape. But um. Yeah, so I do have this guy um, wedged in the bottom of the tin, and it is the last item that is in there. It is, I believe, number 50 on the item counts of things that are inside this tin. But um, there you have it. My handy-dandy little tweezers here. But um, there you have it. This is my version of an EDC Altoid survival tin. And um, I will be updating this video here very soon. I just wanted to show you what was inside my my old Altoids. So my next video is going to be pretty exciting because I get to make a new one. But yeah, be prepared, guys. Literally, be prepared. It's super important. This is out with me. Please subscribe and like and share and send me all your money. But, um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. And please watch my other videos and... Please, I'm begging you. I need to feed my family.